Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the updates 1.98 dev server, and it's time to have a look at the new Italian ships that are coming to the game. The Italians are getting a full tech tree added to the game, uh, so it's time to start where we begin to go on. The start is the MAS-551. This is going to be the reserve vehicle for the Italians, and you can see that it has access to two 450mm to uh, steam turbine torpedoes, and also one 20mm Breda gun on the back. So it seems pretty simple. You know, it's uh, very, very similar to a lot of other reserves that we have in the game, and it's kind of nice that, you know, they have this style of PT boat. I've personally had a lot of fun with these styles of PT boats. I'm very much a rank 1 and 2 player for naval, been moving into rank 3 uh, very slowly recently. But rank 1 and 2 with the speed and maneuverability of a lot of these boats, it's pretty fun. And to see the MAS be a reserve means that at least Italy will have a, a competent uh, reserve to start with to get people enticed into the tree. The torpedoes themselves only have a travel distance of 3 kilometers and a maximum speed in the water of 81 kilometers an hour. But then again, you don't really need anything more since you'll be on the majority small map. So it is nice, as I said to see it. Moving on with the PT boats, uh, we have the MS-15, or the most torpedo boats I should, uh, boats, I should say. This is a lot bigger <laughs> of a machine, and the only real difference is that it gets access to two 20mm overall. Also has 19 crew on the machine, and as you can see, made of wood, 40mm of the hull, 15mm superstructure, and that is where we are at. Has also the torpedo tubes going straight so it'll be much easier to guide them in uh, compared to a bunch of other stuff and also has the radio station down here with a bunch of ammo uh, under the guns which makes of course complete sense. The three engine setup the triangular trifecta uh, is here to stay and this thing's a little bit slower than its compatriots of 61 kilometers an hour mainly because it's a lot heavier at 63 tons compared to 29. The VAS 201 this uh, finishes our first set of machines, and this has only 10 crew on it, uh, but it does have access once again to two 20 millimeters, one on the front and one on the back, and also two torpedoes, which are in very precarious positions. Uh, you know, normally they are sat in tubes, normally they are sat at the sides of the boat, uh, but this one, no, they are sat in the center, elevated and uh, sorted to basically fire when ready, which is really funny to see. Um, if you want to see how these uh, torpedoes are fired for the uh, Italians, let's just get this thing moving because it's obviously a little bit slow to get started. You can see here that it drops them off to the side and then they curve outwards and then in, which is pretty nice, uh, but it does mean that, you know, they're not flinged off, which is kind of a shame. But you can see a really nice mechanism there of it just pushing the torpedoes out. So whoever did that, Really nice job. Looks like a beautiful animation on these machines. But yeah, at the end of the day... Oh, this has 26 crew. Sorry, not 10. Uh, yeah, this has 26 crew. But at the end of the day, this is going to be very similar to the other machines. Uh, so... We're starting off with some really nice torpedo boats. Moving on to another torpedo boat. This is the Stefano Tor, or the, or the Moto Torpedo Niera Stefano Tor. And uh, this machine is pretty nifty too. It has access to some four 450mm wet heater torpedoes, the SI-170s, also can get access to depth charges if you really want to bring some along, and the guns are three 13.2mm and a 6.5, so it gains in torpedoes, but loses when it comes to the armament. You can see them in a staggered formation at the front here as well, which is kind of interesting to see. You know, you got the 13.2 here, here, and here. Uh, so they shouldn't really actually have to cover each other that much, meaning that you'll be able to fire at will, which is kind of lovely. And the 6mm is right at the back here, or the 6.5mm, I should say, the Fiat Model 26, uh, which isn't, you know, going to be too great. It has the two engines set up, and then uh, may actually 
actually no maybe it's supposed to have a three engine setup but it's just missing one uh, or it might be even missing two uh, by the way that this is all set up but we'll have to see in the future crew complement of 16 obviously no additional armor on this and really not a lot at all this thing's got no survivability but it does have a decent amount of torpedoes which is really cool to see the MS-53 comes in at 1.7, and this is uh, very similar to the S-100s that we see from the, uh, from the German tech tree. But you can see the torpedoes are very interesting. So you've got, once again, two mounted on the back here in the flingers to the side. Then you have torpedoes uh, on the front, and then two 20mm uh, cannons uh, which are on the machine as well and the interesting thing about these torpedoes is they're actually different from each other and so you've got the ones which fling out the side and the ones which go out the front these are different torpedoes so they have different trajectories they have different speeds they have different distances it's kind of interesting to see so you go flop and then it comes out <laughs> so similar to how the uh, German torpedoes have, then these ones get flung to the side or pushed out to the side. It's just such a lovely animation. I just want to show it every time. So you got the flopper, and then you got the dropper. Now I'm personally really happy that we have a bunch of these uh, torpedo boats. As an arcade player who uh, personally thinks that torpedoes are really cool for like aerial denial and stuff like that, I think just having them uh, you know, be in this uh, general area is really cool. One thing to also be a little bit worried about is the fact that um, the a lot of these uh, guns, especially the ones on the back, there's a lot of railings around them, meaning that it might be kind of hard to get guns on target. But this is a general issue with a lot of the Italian boats at low tiers, uh, so that will be something to think about, the firing arcs of these machines. The, the last rank 1 vehicle to have a look at is the Vosper 70 GIS 811, and this is getting a little bit more modern, right? Like all the rest look like World War II machines, this one, maybe it's a little bit after, maybe it's during it, but the main thing is it looks a little bit more, you know, modernized. It has the quad 20mm on the back, it also has a 20mm Breda on the front, and also access to the steam uh, turbine SI-200 torpedoes, so I think this is going to be a really nice little... Um, you know, motor torpedo boats as well. Uh, I generally think a lot of these vehicles look really awesome, and uh, I just wanted to show this because the quad at the back, uh, it actually has some very interesting, like, uh, I, I don't know if you call it flames, but end of the barrel, like, I suppose the exhaust of the shell, where you can see what it looks like. I think that looks really cool on this uh, vehicle. So yeah, I, I think this vehicle is going to be powerful. Um, just because of the amount of firepower you can put out there really quickly. Uh, the range of the guns is always going to be the issue with this, but that's going to be an issue with all of these uh, rank 1 Italian machines. The next uh, vehicle is a rank 2 Italian machine, and it's a motor torpedo boat once again. The big upgrade, though, is it goes from the 20mm and the 13.2s to the big old 40mm Bofors. The MS-472 has a 40mm on the front of it, and it has access to two torpedoes with the pushy-pushy uh, <laughs> sets of stuff on the back, and also a complement of 19 crew. So the main addition to this vehicle is literally just the 40 millimeter compared to the 20s that you see uh you know out the way the uh other thing about this is when you have a look at the x-ray it sits at the trifecta once again of engines which is nice and also the radio room once again in a very similar situation the MS-471 uh, 2.7, and this is uh, one which has a ton of guns all over it. So this is the first one which I believe uh, doesn't have torpedoes. Everything else did have torpedoes up to this point, and instead of torpedoes, this thing has six 20 millimeters, which is just kind of odd. So this is basically just an AA uh, gunship. And the 20 millimeters are set up in such a way that you can only really get three or four 20 millimeters at a target at once. So you can never really be fully combat effective. And also, with only a crew of 19, you don't really get any more survivability apart from the wood that the hull is made up from. So it is kind of an interesting choice. 
that we have this machine in the game, uh, but it is really nicely modelled, and it does look really funny when all of the Italians are sat on the 20mm as they're wandering about. One thing I did miss is the MAS569, so this is the starter premium for the Italians, and the difference is, as you can see, this has a 20mm and a 6.5mm, whereas the MAS551 only has a 20mm. So this also uh, goes faster, so it is technically a better vehicle than its standard Tech Tree counterpart, uh, and when you have a look at where the 6mm is, uh, is it actually modelled? Yes, it's modelled right here in the centre, so you can see that it looks forward so if anybody's coming at you at least you can hit them with a 6.5 you know it's something to have a think about also the I've just realized the x-ray of these look at the fuel tanks Jesus uh, <laughs> this thing was uh, full-on uh, fuel the next vehicle is the MV613 this has a two uh, 40 millimeter bofors on it no torpedoes once again so we're really getting into the battle bow feel still only 19 crew, max speed of 61 kilometers an hour, so very similar to all of the other machines that we've seen so far. The only thing that's really differencing or uh, making them different is the different armaments that is on them. Then we have the Fulgore 490, which is a conglomeration of the 40 millimeters and uh, torpedoes, which is a lethal combination when it comes to naval. All you have to do is ask something like the Dark Classes about that. Uh, it's personally my favorite combo, some form of torpedoes and also uh, 40 millimeter bofors. They just can go to work. It also has a little bit more crew than a bunch of the other machines we've seen, 38, and also 67 kilometers an hour on the max speed, which is really nice. It's also made out of steel instead of wood, and no nonsense when it comes to the depth charges or anything like that, which in my opinion is really nice to see. Four engines as well uh, to uh, back up this machine. It is quite a large lad, which uh, might be a bit of a problem since uh, artillery exists and also uh, other machines machines exist at 3.3 which are pretty strong but we'll see how it goes the Sayeta P494 so this is a machine a lot of people are interested in because of the fact that it doesn't just have two 40 millimeter Bofors L70s which are really strong 40 millimeters with a great fire rate they've also got this at the back uh, which is an 8.1 inch Netuno or Netuno uh, rocket launcher and it has five anti-ship missiles this machine has the first anti-ship missiles that we're going to be seeing in War Thunder and it's coming to the new, brand new Italian tech tree for you to give it a go at. It also has 36 crew, it has a little bit of armor around the Bofors but apart from that you're looking at 8 millimeters or 4 millimeters, and then on the x-ray you can see it's pretty fancy too. Look at this smoke funnel beautifully modeled along with the auxiliary caliber turret telling you the horizontal and vertical guidance of it and also the fire rates even though you only have five missiles uh, huge engines on the back and then ammo storage all over the place or ammo storage sorry all over the place for these two guns but if you want to see what the Natunos are capable of they are 280 meters per second missiles 15.8 kilos of explosive mass with a TNT equivalent of 25.28 kilos since they are Torpex. Now understand that this is a modification, so you are going to have to research up to it. It is a rank 3 modification in order to get the uh, missiles or the rocket launcher, as it says, even though they are technically missiles. So just remember that when you get this vehicle. It's also quite an expensive vehicle RP-wise. I think it's over 200k, so it's going to take a while to be able to get all of these uh, vehicles. You've also got, you know, access to radar, which is really nice, especially since you have HEVT with the uh, good old, uh, with the good old Bofors. Always nice to uh, be able to just batter planes with that. You can see the radio fuse going off there, and boom, <laughs> so destroyed. So let's have a look at the rockets. They don't have 360 degree movement, meaning that uh, you will have to move them around the place, either left to right, so if you do have to change angle, it's going to take a while to change their angle. And these missiles are pretty good against boats, not so good against ships. Uh, so what I mean by that is I'll show you. This ship might be a little bit close uh, for comfort, but we can give it a go. So missile is lined up. Well, it's nearly lined up. 
Uh, missile is lined up. It fires. Whoop. Yep, a little bit close. Uh, but <laughs> let's fire this one instead. So, missile is lined up. And then you can see it goes in. You can guide it in because it is a missile. And you can miss uh, because I'm a donkey. But well, let's try again. That was completely my fault. You can just guide it straight into it. Uh, boom. Hole break. Uh, so, yeah, good luck with that. And then with this one, we'll just stop and then just fire it. Let it go straight. <laughs> And it'll hull break. So you can see against against smaller ships, against PT boats, this thing will just wreck them. It will do a ton of damage to them. It will be able to annihilate them whenever it feels like, and that's really good. And if and if the anti-ship missiles don't, well, you got these wonderful bofers to actually do the job, which are incredibly powerful too. So once again, just as a quick demonstration, we can fire. We can guide it in to. Oops. We can fire, but we can also guide it into the PT boats as it goes in. As long as we stay in the arc of the gun, then we should be completely fine. We'll just wait for this one to come, because it's just a better target just to show off the uh, missiles. And then we'll shoot a few of the destroyer just to try and show you what uh, is worth it in this. If you want to see the power of the 40 millimeters, yeah, uh, good night. They've also made it so ships like do backflips and stuff if they get explosive damage, which is kind of weird. I'm kind of wondering why that is. But uh, you can see that pop goes the weasel, destroyed that wonderful, wonderful boat. So this is going to be very useful from range uh, against PT boats because they can't really dodge unless they pop smoke or anything. But you can see against larger machines like this destroyer over here, the damage is pretty good, you know, it's knocking out compartments, but it's not sending off ammunition, it's not, uh, you know, it's not doing anything crazy, it's not one-shotting the destroyer, which was obviously a large worry for a lot of people once they saw these machines about. You can see that the destroyer is down to 37% after being hit by two missiles, but still, you know, it, it's, it's still... Uh, it's still feasible, it can still fight. So even after three missiles, which is, you know, three out of five, it's 60% of the loadout of this thing, the, uh, that destroyer is still technically combat effective, even if it's even if it's going to struggle to repair itself because of the amount of crew that's on board. But it just shows you they're not one taps, right? They're not something that you can just chuck at a ship and do a crazy amount of damage to. Instead, you're going to have to use your guns, you're going to have to use your artillery, you're going to have to use a little bit of an house uh, to be able to finish this off, which is completely fine. And also, you know, with the HEVT, the multi-purpose of this machine is looking really good. It's looking like a lovely, uh, you know, uh, 4.3 vehicle. Uh, the only issue is if it faces destroyers all the time, may have a bit of an issue. The next vehicle is the first destroyer on the list, so that was rank 1 and 2, basically the boats. Now we're on to the big old destroyers, and the destroyers are a little bit lackluster. And before we get to that, I should talk about the premium, because the premium, well, let's just say I don't think it's going to come out in this way. And what I mean by this, so, the Spaviero, which we see in front of us, the P420, with the Automalada 76mm gun on it, it's hole breaking stuff. And the rule <laughs> in War Thunder for naval is if you are hole breaking stuff, you should have a gun which is 100mm or higher in caliber. Well, this thing has a 76mm gun. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense that it is being able to hull break stuff. So I just want to put that out there. If you see a lot of clips of this thing just absolutely annihilating enemy teams, that is the reason why. Uh, because of the fact that it is hull breaking things when it shouldn't be. Then it has the ammunition count of 240 for the 76mm. Obviously has a pretty powerful engine, can go 93 kilometers an hour, and also has a crew of 10, so no survivability, but also a lovely radar on it. It, it is a... Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It is a hydrofoil, uh, so it is able to get itself above the water, which is pretty cool. And the Otomalada gun, which is its main and only armament, at least in War Thunder for now, is pretty powerful, as we said. 
you know, it is able just to one-shot machines, uh, which uh, it shouldn't be doing, <laughs> or at least I hope it isn't supposed to be doing. If it is supposed to be doing that, then we all need to run. Um, it also has access to HEVT, and I'm not sure if the HEVT is working on planes or if it's supposed to work on planes, but you can see here that I'm shooting near the plane and nothing is really happening. It has access to also stuff such as the uh, SAP, but why use SAP when you are literally just one-shotting boats? Pop. So yeah. It does have access to smokescreen, also artillery, which is nice. And the radar is a lovely little, like, kiss on top of everything. So, I think this is going to be stronger than the PGO-2, if I'm honest with you. Because I think it's better at dealing with larger machines. It has greater range to it. Instead of being stuck at uh, low range, it can actually be able to fire out. It also has more options because of the rounds that it has. And generally, uh, I just prefer the 76mm to the Vulcan cannon. You can see we're doing a ton of damage to this machine, only really firing a few rounds. you got to remember my crew skill right now is incredibly low, so even with this really low crew skill, we can slowly but surely kill a destroyer, which used to take ages with any boats of similar level. So, the Spaviero is looking very fun. We will, I'm sure we'll see it more in uh, many videos uh, to come because of if that hull break ability doesn't get changed. And the next vehicle is the turbine, or oh, I'm sure it's like the turbine or something. Uh, this is the first destroyer that you get a hold of. Normally, most nations don't have very powerful destroyers to start off with, and the turbine is very similar to that. I would actually put it in the higher uh, it's probably like mid to higher of the starter destroyers, especially since we have Clemsons in that list, uh, especially the British Clemson. But the turbine has two sets of dual 120mm guns. It also has 340mm on it in kind of precarious places. Uh, so it has two in the center, like right here and right here. And then it has one in a really odd position at the back of the vehicle, underneath the the dual set of 120s. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but it seems very odd to me. Also have these, has these huge powerful engines, two smoke funnels, uh, so a little bit harder to take out, and a crew complement of 179. Only has uh, 12 millimeters of armor on it though, on the main towers, and only 16 millimeters of armor on the hull so you're going to be able to blast through that pretty easily also has access to some interesting rounds for the 120s so you get a he which is nice uh, you get access to an ap he just in case you get up to it i suppose and then also once again a hetf with a timed fuse so you do have many options uh, to yourself and you also get these si 270s which you will see a lot when it comes to these Italian vehicles. The 533mm steam turbine SI-270s, uh, there's pretty much two torpedoes, uh, which uh, the Italians used during World War II in large mass, and these ones were the ones which were used on the larger ships. So get used to them uh, and their statistics. Their statistics are very average, uh, but they're okay. You know, uh, the speed in the water is not the best, but their travel distance is pretty good, and that is something to be happy about. So yeah, that is the first destroyer you can get your hands on. It isn't too bad. The next vehicle is the Dardo. The Dardo comes in. Actually, I need to check what class it is, um, uh, because uh, this is the... Uh, oh, it's the Dardo class, okay, but it is the Caccia... Uh, Torpedo Dianere is probably how you say that, uh, but this is another destroyer, and being the Dardo, it has access to, once again, two dual mounts of the 120mm, and then it gets access to two 40s, and then two dual mounts of the 20s. So the main difference between this and the one before it is the crew is slightly different, the Dardo, I believe, is slightly faster as well, so it probably has a little bit better engines or a little bit better displacement. And uh, also, it has access to two dual 20s 
where there used to be that 40. So the 40 no longer exists on the back, uh, underneath the 120s, uh, because that would be kind of silly. Instead, the 20s are mounted up here, so they're closer uh, to deal with the enemies, which will be near it. And also, they are Breda guns, which is lovely to see. One smoke funnel as well, instead of two, and uh, leading to these massive engines, along with the transmissions. And the armor is the same, though. Only 16mm on the hull, and 12mm on the towers, means that this thing is going to get HE to death especially since it only has four main guns uh, once again he apcbc hetf and exactly the same torpedoes as before the next vehicle is the uh, artiglieri and this is the soldati class uh, of uh, ship and this is the top destroyer that you have right now now just remember uh, as a lot of the trees have come into the game a lot of them get, you know, uh, kind of a starter tree and then they get expanded upon. If you have a look at the Japanese tree when it was, uh, you know, put into the game compared to where it is now, or even the British tree, especially when it comes to its destroyers, completely different. So understand that there may only be three uh, Japanese, uh, sorry, three Italian destroyers right now, but that doesn't mean there's only going to be three for a long time. They'll probably get a bunch more in the next update. So this, once again, has 120 millimeters, but it has five of them. It has uh, two on the front, three on the back, or maybe one on two on the back and one in the center here, uh, which is flanked by torpedoes. And once again, the same torpedoes, so six SI-270s. It also has access to four dual mountings of 40 millimeters, uh, so a little bit better AA protection, uh, basically just replacing where the 20 millimeters were before on the Dardo. Never mind, I can't uh, see. Actually, instead of 40 millimeters, these are four dual 20 millimeters, so kind of in a way reduced AA armament instead of gained. Uh, so, yeah, that is an unfortunate thing. Uh, and the armor is once again exactly the same. The crew increases though, so survivability does increase uh, along with it, which is really nice. And then it has access to the same rounds HE, APCBC, HETF. Then you have the premium, the Ginieri, and the Ginieri is also a Soldati class, and the main difference between it and the Anglieri that we have in game is it is at least slower from what I can see. I don't have it, uh, so I'm not sure if that's its stock configuration or not, but the main thing is that it has more armament in the form of AA. So it has the same torpedoes, it has the same main guns, but it has some extra 20 millimeters over it. Uh, it has four extra 20 millimeters. Uh, so you know, it, uh, where the uh, where the other soldati doesn't have uh, some of these 20 millimeters, the Ginieri uh, is able to get them. It also has a pretty cool skin on it. If you're interested in that, you know, uh, some nice turquoise going on there with some GE on the front of it. So that's nice to see. But overall, it's very similar to the Artiglia just slightly better than it. Then we have three light cruisers, the big boys. We have the Attilio Regolo, uh, the Bartolomeo uh, Colliono, and then the Raimondo Montecutioli. And I'm sure I said all of them wrong, and I do apologize to anyone Italian watching. This uh, first one, the Attilio Regolio, is uh, something to be mastered at because it has some interesting guns. Four mountings of dual sets of 135 millimeters, two on the front, two on the back, is nice to have. Then you have eight 37 millimeter auto cannons, four 20 millimeter dual auto cannons as well, all over the machine, mainly in the center though that you can see uh, right here. And then it has two smokestacks which funnel massive engines to it and also a ton of ammunition all over the place. Uh, the other thing is it has a crew of 420, uh, so you know, it has a decent crew complement overall. And uh, the main problem with this light cruiser, the Artilio, is armor. So the the hull has 25 millimeters of armor. That's not stopping anything. The uh, superstructure has eight millimeters of armor. That's stopping less. Uh, the only 
additional armor is on the main fire, fire towers and it's really only 20 millimeters so once again this cruiser really doesn't have any armor behind it and i feel sorry for it when it sees a graph speed but at least it's fast 72 kilometers an hour is pretty nice to have and with these 135 millimeters which have access to he APHEBC, and also hetf this is the round i'm most interested in uh, but overall it should be quite nice to have have. The SI-270s make a return for this as well, uh, because they're the only torpedoes which were really used, uh, so yeah. The next one is our first 5-3, the Bartolomeo Colleoni, and uh, what you see here is a little bit more armor. Not much, uh, but a little bit. It also has access to large guns, four dual sets of 152s, once again, two on the front uh, and two on the back. Then uh, it has access to three dual 100 millimeters, uh, which are in the center, uh, I believe, in these little areas. You can see them right here. And then uh, two sets of 40 millimeters and four dual sets of 13.2s. So this one has probably the best secondary armament that we've had a look at, you know, with the 100 millimeters, which hopefully will do decent work. And also the 152s should be able to take out a decent amount. 507 crew on them, also 69 kilometers an hour so still keeping the speed up which is great and also as we said you know the armor is a little bit better even though it's still only around about 20 millimeters in the center and 15 for the ammo elevators a little bit more for the bridge uh, which is good for it and you can see how beautiful this is all modeled does have two smoke funnels but one is definitely much girthier than the other one and then of course you have the ammunition storage all over this and i the only thing i look at this as is mm, this looks like a really pretty ammo rack uh, <laughs> but the the fact is um it should be able to deal out a decent amount of damage with its 152s i just hope it doesn't become you know eugen meat just like uh, everything else does the other thing, crew of 507 is a decent amount, but still a lot lower than a bunch of other ships at the same uh, BR. Such as the Raimondo Montecuccioli, uh, Raimondo Montecuccioli class, uh, the other 5.3 light cruiser. This thing has access to, once again, four dual sets of 152 millimeters. Then it has the torpedoes on top of it, the four 533s, two per side. Then three 100 joules, um, which we have seen before, you know, with the one before us, but they're mounted in a slightly different place on the uh, lower half of the vehicle. Then we have four dual 37s and 10 20 millimeters all over the damn thing so uh, it doesn't really change that much when it comes to uh, the actual armament of it but what actually changes is the armor and the speed so it's a little bit faster has a little bit more crew so it's more survivable and the armor actually is there kind of so it starts off with a hull of 25 millimeters and then they add on top of it another 25 millimeter belt but the citadel uh, for it uh, is 40 60 30 and the main fire towers of course are 70 22 22 so it's going to be a lot harder to knock out these main guns compared to a lot of its uh, you know other allies in the tech tree meaning that as a light cruiser it still may not be the most powerful out there, but it's got the best chance of dealing with some of those big brutes uh, from the other nation, such as, you know, the Cleveland class, which we saw earlier. Uh, the general 152 rounds, you get a HE with 29mm of pen, and you also get an AP HE BC, uh, which is probably, you know, the best round if you need to use an AP, because it still has a lot of HE filler in it. And, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's uh, really nice to see and overall AP uh, is probably the way to go against a lot of these guys since they're going to be running around with armor and then we have HE, APHE and HETF as well uh, which is uh, for the 100 millimeters and then the creme de la creme the 5.7 the heavy cruiser at the top of the tree is the Trento 
Now the Trento has four dual sets of 203s, which are very standard for the majority of heavy cruisers in the game. Six dual sets of 100mm, which are lovely to see as well, uh, on the sides uh, of the uh, Trento. Then four 40mm, four 37mm in dual sets, and four dual sets of 13.2s. So this is definitely a lot better in its uh, AA armament, it's a lot better in its secondary armament, and a lot better in its primary armament. And what a surprise, it's a heavy cruiser. You know, <laughs> that's generally what happens. It still keeps the same torpedoes, though. You know, we can't get rid of those SI-270s. Uh, we have to not change at all. And it also keeps a lot of its speed compared to many of its compatriots uh, at 65 kilometers an hour, 987 crew. So not as high as some of the other ones which are flashing about the place, but still... A decent amount and the main thing is the armor so once again 60 70 50 on the citadel 100 100 100 on the main fire turrets so these things are going to be a lot harder to take out and you know you have decent armor around the ammo elevators 70 and the belt uh well uh, the belt i don't think is modeled yet uh, so hopefully at some point they get it modeled otherwise these things are going to light up like a christmas tree look at the amount of engines in the center there for that smoke funnel a wonderful stuff but yeah that is the italian tech tree overall it looks really nice. Rank 1 and 2 looks incredibly promising. You know, with the 20mm and the 40mm and the torpedoes all over the place. The destroyers look like they could need a little bit of love, if I'm quite honest with you. And the cruisers, well, we're going to have to see. Because cruiser land is German land. And I'm wondering if the Italians are going to put a chink in it or not. And my guess is no. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Eugene's Terry, Daniel Stanton, Blackie, E Love Goat, J Wilt, Martinez, B Young, Chris Giltnane, Trigger Hippie, Ambrosius McClellan, and also Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.